Hi, I'm Dr. Bill White, and I'm with the American Orthodontic Society, and I want to talk to you this afternoon just a little about uh, understanding the torquing of the anterior teeth on deep bite cases. And this is where, uh, in most of these, the upper anterior teeth have come down over the lower anterior teeth, and a lot of times you can't even see the lower anterior teeth. Uh, the uh, lower anterior teeth, though, may be high up in the vault. In other words, they may be chewing into the uh, gingival tissue behind the upper anteriors, or chewing on the back of the upper anterior teeth. Uh, and so this is a deep dental bite. And you can have deep dental bites with high angle skeletal bite or a low skeletal bite. Uh, in other words, the chin can be right up close to the nose. <laughs> so to speak, not not actually, uh, and have the, ante the anterior teeth, the upper teeth, be lapping over the lower anterior teeth. Or you can have somebody with a very high lower third of the face, and the dental situation would be the upper anterior teeth completely over the lower anterior teeth. Uh, I'll show that a little better uh, as we get on in into some of the models here. I'll show that. <clears throat> now this uh, case I've already treated for a while when we start here. Treated the lower anteriors. Uh, here is the facial structure. It's, it's pretty good. The lower uh, facial structure is a little more than uh, this distance here is a little more than it is from here to here and from here. So this is on the slight high angle, but it's not enough to even bother. But when you treat it, you want to kind of keep it at that high. You wouldn't want a uh, height. You wouldn't want to bring the chin down here. Uh, it would distort the way the facial structure looks a lot. So you don't want to do that. Uh, so I'll show you what you have to do here in just a second. Now the from the side, the same thing. He's got a pretty prominent chin. I think he's got his teeth apart just a little bit there. And he's got a nice smile line, the teeth up. And we've already leveled out the lower teeth at this Point. So you uh, will be showing you that, but it, I'm going to show you the upper, how we level that. Now, looking at the models, uh, you can see uh, the upper anterior teeth are way down here. You don't even see the lower anterior teeth. But we're going to look at it from the back side here in a few minutes. And the upper anterior, the lower anteriors are up high in the... Um, vault back there and they're almost touching the gum or they do touch the the gingival tissue behind the upper anteriors and they've worn the upper anterior teeth down to some extent and we got several other problems i mean this tooth is going to have to come back in and and uh, there's a whole host of things that you just normal orthodontic things i'm not going to be discussing that much now, when I look at it from this side, uh, it's uh, fairly well class one, see? Uh, so when you have a class one situation with a deep bite, you've got to have crowding, or else this tooth is kind of crowded out. The first bicuspid up here is a little bit crowded out and sticking out and it doesn't even occlude back there on that side. Now, let's look at the other side of the mouth. And over here now, this is class two. Uh, in other words, for this to be class one, this molar would have to be somewhere in here, you see. Uh, and the bottom ones would be out in front of this. And so we got a 
have a lopsided case, and most of them are something like that, see, when you go in to do that, so go ahead and work on them. Now let's take another look here, uh, looking down on the lower anterior teeth, uh, this class 2 side, you see uh, your first bias across here, and then here's the cuspid on one side, the cuspid over here, and this is the class 2 side is pushed further over than the other. Now, uh, this is not excessively crowded. Uh, if you got a class 2, you have nice straight teeth in here uh, and have a deep bite. If you got a pretty big class 2 problem, uh, then that's possible. Now, these teeth are a lot higher than they look here, and I'm going to show that to you in just a minute here. Uh, now, the uppers are hanging down. The lower teeth are, see where that's chewed on the side of that tooth? It is coming in to the back of these teeth. Right here, it's got little wear facets where those lower anterior teeth go up against that. Now, the upper anteriors worn down some and got the dent and exposed and it wears away real quick and it's good to go in and put some kind of composite in there keep you from chipping chipping those teeth uh, you can break out of them along pretty easy up there so I would fill those teeth uh, and just smooth that off up there now let's see what we got okay here's the slide that I want to talk about here for a while. Now these lower anterior teeth are about that much higher than the other, maybe not quite that much, but they are sticking up in here. So we want to bring them down to level them out with the rest of the arch in here. So we'll bring these teeth will be coming down, and the upper teeth, which are hanging down, and where you don't even see these, we're going to be bringing them up. And uh, we needed to carry them a little higher, and I'll show that intruding arch. So you can put these intruding arches on the day you start the case, you see. What we're interested in is pretty well leveling this out. You'll have some curvus V in there and stuff, but you are going to go down with the anterior teeth and up with it, I mean the lower anteriors and up with the upper anterior teeth. Now, to get the appliance on, in other words, to put the brackets on the teeth and everything, you're going to have to do something See, you can't, uh, you can't put brackets on these lower anterior teeth. It's just, you can put them on the bicuspids and molars and stuff like that. But you get in here, you've got to, you've got to open the bite some way or another so you can get something on these teeth so you can put force on them to start putting them down. Now you can start on the upper teeth and be raising them up. And as you raise them up, you'll be out and the roots are back in here, see. And you push it up this way, so these teeth are going to move forward. Now, when you get them forward enough where there's no uh, spacing or anything on this, you, you want to slow that down. And so you uh, actually uh, tie the arch wire back. In other words, we have any of these old magos that come up uh, something like this and we tie that arch wire back and we let it go out once we get them out as far as we want to you tie the arch wire back and then even though you're pushing up here and the roots of the teeth may be back here the tooth can't the crown of the tooth can't go forward here so you're in a sense of putting reverse torque on that, holding it back by tying the arch wire back. But it's still trying to come forward to some extent. So there's a wee bit of, of forward movement of the whole upper teeth as you as you put this intruding force on there uh, and the 
intruding force is you know, it comes off like this and then you bring you got to watch where you bring it down here and it kind of prizes these uh, teeth uh, and they'll kind of tip down here but then they the occlusion holds those teeth in place now let me go back to that slide that we're looking into the mouth so in this particular case in opening this he's got a fairly high angle case so we bond some blocks on these teeth back here it's going to bond some acrylic something that's soft it, it'll harden you can harden it in the mouth and close it now these teeth would be a certain distance away from the roof when you when they bite down on this their teeth would come down on this block you see now that causes the people the, the person wearing this stuff of course uh, to bite more and they bite their teeth more and so the arch where you going up here you pull down put on the upper teeth and it's picking these upper teeth up you put it down here it's trying to come up with the upper teeth and then you put one on the bottom and that wire would be down here coming around you right all the way around and we raise it up and hook it here and it's going to be trying to pull these teeth down now the force that this is pushing this down is pushing these up and the force that's pulling these up over here on the end here is pushing the upper molars down in other words these, these molars are being pushed together by the force that's trying to pick these up you'll always have to eat the same force here as you have here and it's harder to intrude teeth than it is to extrude them and the reason this works is because people are chewing on their teeth or chewing on these blocks so in order to get this open enough to put the appliance on we have to put the blocks in there and that's not the only reason the blocks are there people chew on these blocks twice as much maybe as they normally would chew their teeth together because they're this in contact all the time and people just chew down on it and so these teeth won't move much and that's why this carrier appliance works that's why any of these intruding arches work people chew on that and we can open people's back and work off of these motors back here and not have any increase in the vertical height of the face because it just doesn't let the, the motors erupt like they would now if we had somebody that had a real low angle case and i'm going to do a video on a guy uh, next i think is it where he is we wanted to give him some vertical height so we put the blocks on the front or it's not blocks there's this one big block that goes across the front up here uh, and the upper teeth bite down on it and that leaves a gap in between these teeth and now you have it picking these teeth up and these down and there's nothing underneath them so these teeth move together when you're doing that and every time you get just a millimeter increase down here it may be two or two and a half or three millimeters increase in the vertical height of the face out here in other words the chin would be dropping down in this area like here and if, if we put the blocks in the end here part so we put these blocks in this case we want to keep the vertical height where it is and we have to put the blocks in there anyway so we're going to put the blocks back in this area and we go through it so i picked the case up here after we've already taken the blocks off and everything but the one the video i showed just uh 
earlier on deep bites, it shows the uh, block in there when we start the case. You put it on there when you start. So now let's go ahead and and get in now. They, uh, this is just showing some wear facets on these teeth where the lower anteriors are coming up there although they probably touch the tissue in here and they wear the backs of the upper anterior teeth uh, down and they wear the fronts of the lower anterior teeth off so we want to get that fitting uh, together properly with a proper overjet and overbite uh, to finish them up like that all right here we are in the case a good bit and we've already elevated these teeth are down here somewhere see they're up there now and uh, this tooth is extra long and so we're planning on probably to reduce it a little bit here it's the neck of it is fitting with that and we'll take that down just a little and we've got the teeth in that was in crossbite and everything there's a lot of stuff done here now and so we're picking it up where we've got them almost lined up and everything uh, ready to go so but we need a little bit more elevation of this and we'll put an intruding wire back on that part now on this side the same thing the lateral is okay there now it'll look complicated as heck uh, when you get over here then we need to come back see and elevate this a little bit so we're going to put an intruding wire back on there now. so this this wire here and there's a regular arch wire there now we didn't want these teeth to spread apart anymore so we put a lacing material down under the arch wire over here and tied it up tight so these teeth are snug together real good then we tie the other part of the arch wire back here to the motor so these teeth can't separate here as we're pushing more on the anterior part of the tooth and now the root is back here and we're pushing this normally the tooth would swing forward in here but we won't let it swing forward so we're actually putting some torque on it by wiring it back with the arch wire back there so we're keeping it from going uh, forward but even so the slight pressure forward in there would tend to move this just a teeny bit you won't even notice it though it'll make your class two a little worse but just slightly now let's <clears throat> let's go ahead and look now this is a little more you can see on this shot of uh, the intruding wire which would go way up here and we bring it down and hook it and it's piggybacked over the top now this is the wire though it's underneath here and it's tied back here with the, that omega and it's tied back to that motor or the second motor too if it's if you're involved with it and it won't let this come forward so if you put this pressure here it'll just intrude the whole thing bone structure teeth and all the teeth don't sink up in the bone and the bone being out here on the teeth they just go up and the bone holding the teeth goes up with them same thing down here these teeth were up in the roof of the mouth and they're down here now and the bone structure and tissue look almost the same as it did to start with and we need to understand that that bone moves with the teeth and you can take this group of teeth and bring them way out here and the bone will still be with them or you can widen these and this is where they make a lot of mistakes people think they cannot move these teeth out here without them just coming out of the bone but the bone will move right with the teeth and i've got some cases to show 
where they had a cross bite completely the molars were inside and we put a and pulled it out to the side and the teeth move out there and the bone goes with the teeth and uh, that is hard to get across when I show you some ridiculous things that people have done to people thinking that they couldn't put teeth out here when there's no bone if you move the teeth just gradually in groups, the bone goes with the teeth. You might be able to exfoliate or just pull one of them out. If you kept the others back and pull one, you might have to pull it through the bone and strip it. And I uh, have illustrated that on more anterior teeth. All right, so here we are. Now, this is a pretty good example of the arch wire being tied back. Can you see? Now, if you want to do this kind of stuff, I think you should get your bands for the motors made with a, a three tubes on there. But this is a head here, 045. And then there's a regular arch wire deal here and one here. Now this intruding wire is in the top part. This regular arch wire is in a tube that is a convertible tube because if you have to, there's a mirror, see this is a mirror stuck in the cheek and you, you're taking a picture of the mirror, the teeth are over on this, this side. It looks like they're over here. Uh, and if you have to do something in the lower the, the upper second molar, then you'd have to strip this and this would become a bracket for this arch wire here. But now it's a tube there. And down here there's just a double tube. That's all we've got on the bottom. And we put head gears, intruding arches, and lip bumpers and all kinds of stuff in that auxiliary tube, uh, both lower and upper. Uh, in there, so this intruding wire is on that, and we're tying it back. Now, most of the time, you don't have to worry about torquing, but I'm going to show you uh, a little something here. If you want to move the roots of these teeth out, then you've got to put torque in your arch wire that you put in there, and to bring those roots out. And sometimes you won't do that, and then you have to. Well, the lip bumper, and you have it come off of this tube back here to bring it out like that. And we've got illustrations of that in several videos in there. Now, this is the other side, and it's a good view. You see that auxiliary tube right there, and this goes in, turns around like that. And then when they come here, they put it off, and it goes around to the other side of that. You put it down and hook it over. And this arch wire here has the omega on it, and it's tied back so we can keep these teeth from separating. But now here you say, well, we've got this separated. We're, we've got this in the point, and this one here. And what we're going to do is raise this up more, and this is at an angle back in there, and as we get higher, we can close this up more. And it may be that these teeth are so narrow that you want to leave space in there to have it either put the composite in it or crown the teeth to fill the space. Okay, looking at it from this angle, you see see the gaps that we had right there and this is a little narrow too that's a little narrow one there too uh, now let's see oh uh, okay this is just here's a level of 04 and uh, this is really pretty well finished oh now this one had the top worn off we pulled it up and we we're using it you could take the positive and fill and fill that in and make it look more like a regular tooth there uh, for that. That's number six of 
This is the 624 and Alright, the same thing. Here's the upper lined up. But these teeth have this one interdigitated there. This one here and there's a space in there. And we're going to leave that space rather than try to shift this out of the interdigitated position that that's supposed to take. And this should be built up on the cuspid here. Now this cuspid looks a little wider and the lateral is a little wider too over on the other side of the mouth. So this is what you run into with a duck or with a dotage or even any kind of orthodox as far as that's concerned. Uh, let's see. Now the lower looks pretty good there. It's leveled out good. And the uh, here we have the we lace that together and got this lateral and you don't see that gap in there but I'm sure that tooth is real narrow and that's got a little gap back in there. But we've come out pretty close to the midline and they raised these teeth up to a good height. We've got a little overbite and overjet which is normal in there. You slide your jaw forward to bite off something and these teeth don't touch. The intruding arch wire is still on top of here. See? And you open it in this place and work it on that. Oh, well, this is about the end of the video, I think. Well, we're a little class 2 on that side, so we put a class 2 elastic in the open that space. And we're trying to pull these teeth back to get them into a more of a class 1 relation in there, but I think, no, the upper intruding wire is still on there. You just hardly see it, but it's piggyback right over the top of the other one right in here. And the other side, we didn't need the class two, but we still got the intruding wire in there. That's a level of all four we're coming in there. Now this is looking pretty good on the bottom there. It's pretty well closed up and everything. And the top looks better, but we've got this, these two teeth, either need composite buildup on the sides of them or something because the points are in the right place in here, but they need to be uh, a little bit bigger, especially this tooth right here. And this one probably could lose a little bit. Both of those levels are too small uh, to fill the gap properly in there. Now, that's the end of the uh, videos that I have. And if you have to move the root of the tooth out, then you'll have to learn how to put torque in the arch wire and rotate the root out. Uh, this type of torquing here that holding this back as you intrude it does torquing as well, but if the root stays pretty much where it is as far as that plane, but it goes up or down is the way it's being pushed. So we'll close out. I hope you are able to pick this up. This is a very good thing to learn if you're going to do some real bang up good orthodontics and you can put these roots and the teeth where you want to. And the appliance we use will do that good. It just requires some wire bending and some understanding of the torquing of these teeth. So I hope you'll pick that up from this. And I'll just push up here and, well, I don't want to use that first. We'll just uh, let it go and hope you learn something from this case. So I'll see you later now. So I'm going to go over and, and stop this.